Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how you can use um, f prime and f double prime to figure things out about f of x, um, which is something you're going to be doing a ton of. Uh, so let's let's just get started. Um, so the first thing you need to know is that f prime of x uh, tells you the slope of f of x. Um, it tells you other things as well, but that's what we're focused on here. So f prime tells you the slope of f of x. So there's a couple things we get from that. First is, if f prime of x is greater than zero, we know automatically that f of x is increasing because it has a positive slope. And uh, the opposite is also true. If f prime of x is less than zero, then we automatically know that f of x is decreasing. So this information you're going to use uh, frequently to just determine uh, intervals on which f is increasing, decreasing, and you can use that information to find uh, relative maximums and minimums. So let's look at one way that you might do that. So um, it's called sign charts. And what you would do is you would find the derivative, find all the zeros and discontinuities, uh, put them on essentially a number line, and then test regions. So it's going to end up looking something like this. And then let's say that when we test our region, so A and B are where f prime is either zero or undefined. Uh, let's just assume it's zero in this case. So then you test your regions, you get some positives, some negatives, um, and from that we can tell about f of x. Uh, so when f prime is negative, we know that f of x is decreasing. When f prime is positive, we know f of x is increasing, and we can go from there. But you can do a little more with this, uh, because if you, if you just draw these arrows, you can kind of see that uh, f of x must actually have a minimum here, and it must have a maximum here. Um, in this video, I'm going to assume that f of x is continuous, uh, otherwise it's a little more complicated. But So everywhere f goes from decreasing to increasing, uh, it'll have a minimum. Everywhere f goes from increasing to decreasing, it'll have a maximum. And we can tell that from the sign of f prime. Uh, you might also, instead of having a uh, making a sign chart, you might actually be given the graph of f prime. Uh, maybe it looks like this. So in this case, anywhere the graph is above the x-axis, uh, f prime is positive, which would mean that f is increasing. So, for example, on this interval and this interval, we know that f is going to be increasing. And then on this interval and this interval, since f prime is below the x-axis, we know that f is going to be decreasing. And from looking at this graph, anywhere this graph changes from negative to positive, um, f is going to have a maximum, a minimum, sorry. So where the graph changes from negative to positive, uh, f of x will have a minimum, and um, there's actually two of those. And where this graph goes from uh, positive to negative, that means f went from increasing to decreasing, so f must have had a maximum. And here's your other minimum. Okay, um, so something that you'll uh, be dealing with a lot um, is f double prime. So f double prime tells you two things that you just have to keep in mind. So f double prime is actually the derivative of f prime. So it kind of tells you the same thing about f prime that f prime tells you about f of x. So the first thing that it will tell you is it will tell you the slope of f prime. Uh, the second thing it will tell you is the concavity of f of x. So if you're not really familiar with concavity, uh, I have another video about what types of curves you can get, which might help you understand that a little bit. Um, so we do basically the same thing with this. If f double prime is greater than zero, we know two things. We know first of all, that f prime is increasing, and then second of all, we know that f of x is concave up, and if f double prime is negative, we know two things again. We know f prime is decreasing, but we also know that f of x is concave down. More often than not, we're actually interested in the concavity part, um, but it's really important to know all of these connections because the most common thing to be given is the graph of f prime. Um, so we know this about f double prime, we know things about f prime, so let's see what we can do with some stack sign charts. So I went ahead and I made two of them, filled in all the pluses and minuses. We're assuming the function's continuous, so let's see what we can do. So first thing we want to do is we want to figure stuff out about f. So you focus in on each region. So I'm going to focus in on uh, from negative infinity to negative 10 in this case, because that's the first region. So I'm looking at that. From that, I can see that um, f prime is positive, so f will be increasing, and f double prime is negative, so f will be concave down. So we've got increasing, we've got concave down, and then I actually know what that looks like. That looks like that. So I like to draw a little tiny thing there. 
Um, and then we just keep going. So the next interval is from negative 10 to negative 6. So we're dealing with that. So we've got um, f prime is negative, so f will be decreasing. Um, f double prime is negative, so f will be concave down. And that looks like this. And then we just keep going. So you want to do this for each of the intervals. So we've got decreasing concave up, which looks like that. Um, and then we can just fill in decreasing concave down and so on. And you're just looking at the signs. Uh, you want to make sure you hit each of the intervals that's indicated. And then you can kind of fill in those. Okay, so how does this help us? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of these little curves that I made and number them. And now I'm going to just kind of string them together so that they make a nice curve. So there's one, there's two. So this one is kind of like a game when you fill these in. Um, so there you go. There's all nine of them put together. So I don't know anything about the actual function. I just know the shape of the function. It could be that uh, some of the maximums are way up and some of the minimums are, are very low, whatever. Um, it's important. You get the actual values um, of the function from the function. So you take all of the x values you've been dealing with and you plug them into f of x. And that will give you the actual values that you're looking for. Um, and you can see here that we have some maximums, some points of inflection. We actually have a lot of points of inflection. That's where the concavity changes. And we get all that kind of from our sign charts. But a more common thing to do, rather than actually sketching the graph, is to just look at your sign charts and use them to tell you where things are happening. So anywhere f prime goes from positive to negative, f would have a maximum. Everywhere f prime goes from negative to positive, f would have a minimum. So we can do our little arrows here, which are helpful. So you can see a maximum, minimum, a maximum. And there's nothing else because it just goes uh, decreasing, decreasing. And we can do the same sort of thing with f double prime, where we can see the concavity. So down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And then anywhere this changes, f of x would have a point of inflection. So point of inflection. It doesn't matter if it's going negative, positive, or positive, negative. Um, oh, and there's one more there, but I guess I missed it. Okay, so um, I hope you found this helpful. It's a lot of information to take in. Uh, you got to practice it and think about it a lot. Um, but once you master this, uh, almost everything in calculus gets a whole lot easier. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.